straddling the line between fall and winter, the yearly life and death of nature. Halloween is a time of celebration and superstition, but where did it all begin? Halloween's origins date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. The Celts, who lived 2,000 years ago in the area that is now legend, the United Kingdom and Northern France, celebrated their new year on November 1st. This day marked the end of the summer and the harvest and the beginning of the dark, cold winter, a time of year that was often associated with human death. Celts believed that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated Samhain, when it was believed that the ghosts of the dead returned to Earth. In addition to causing trouble and damaging crops, Celts thought that the presence of the otherworldly spirits made it easier for the Druids or Celtic priests to make predictions about the future. For a people entirely dependent on the volatile natural world, these prophecies were an important source of comfort and direction during the long, dark winter. To commemorate the event, Druids built huge sacred bonfires where the people gathered to burn crops and animals as sacrifices to the Celtic deities. During the celebration, the Celts wore costumes, typically consisting of animal heads and skins, and attempted to tell each other's fortunes. When the celebration was over, they relit their hearth fires, which they had extinguished earlier that evening from the sacred bonfire to help protect them during the coming winter. On May 13th, 609 AD, Pope Boniface V dedicated the Pantheon in Rome in honor of all Christian martyrs, and the Catholic Feast of All Martyrs Day was established in the Western Church. Pope Gregory III later expanded the festival to include all saints as well as all martyrs and moved the observance from May 13th to November 1st. By the 9th century, the influence of Christianity had spread into Celtic lands, where it gradually blended with and supplanted the older Celtic rites. In 1000 AD, the church would make November 2nd All Souls Day a day to honor the dead. It is widely believed today that the church was attempting to replace the Celtic festival of the dead with a related but church-sanctioned holiday. All Souls Day was celebrated similarly to Samhain with big bonfires, parades, and dressing up in costumes as saints, angels, and devils. The All Saints Day celebration was also called All Hallows or All Hallowmas. And the night before it, the traditional night of Samhain in the Celtic region began to be called All Hallows Eve and eventually Halloween. Celebration of Halloween was extremely limited in colonial New England because of the rigid Protestant belief systems there. Halloween was much more common in Maryland and the southern colonies, as the beliefs and customs of different European ethnic groups, as well as the American Indians, meshed. A distinctly American version of Halloween began to emerge. First celebrations included play parties, public events held to celebrate the harvest, where neighbors would share stories of the dead, tell each other's fortunes, dance, and sing. Colonial Halloween festivities also featured the telling of ghost stories and mischief-making of all kinds. By the middle of the 19th century, annual autumn festivities were common, but Halloween was not yet celebrated everywhere in the country. In the second half of the 19th century, America was flooded with new immigrants. 
these new immigrants, especially the millions of Irish fleeing Ireland's potato famine of 1846, helped to popularize the celebration of Halloween nationally. Taking from the Irish and English traditions, Americans began to dress up in costumes and go house to house asking for food or money, a practice that eventually became today's trick-or-treat tradition. Young women believed that on Halloween they could divine the name or appearance of their future husband by doing tricks with yarn, apple parings, or mirrors. By the 1920s and 1930s, Halloween had become a secular but community-centered holiday with parades and town-wide parties as the featured entertainment. Despite the best efforts of many schools and communities, Vandalism began to plague Halloween celebrations in many communities during this time. By the 1950s, town leaders had successfully limited vandalism and Halloween had evolved into a holiday directed mainly at the young. Due to the high numbers of young children during the 50s baby boom, parties moved from the town civic centers into the classroom or home, where they could be more easily accommodated. Between 1920 and 1950, the centuries-old practice of trick-or-treating was also revived. Trick-or-treating was a relatively inexpensive way for an entire community to share their Halloween celebration. In theory, families could also prevent tricks being played on them by providing the neighborhood children with small treats. A new American tradition was born, and it has continued to grow today. Although many people in North America now see Halloween as just another night to go out and party, drink, and get into mischief, I'd like to think some people see it as a terrifying night of demons, devils, and all the evil that is pent up all year round, released on the world in one spooky night. <laughs>